Hi! The battle between David and Goliath was very predictable. That is if you understand the cultural and geographic background behind this story. When I was a child, my dad made me memorize passages from the Bible. I'm very thankful to him for that. If you're a parent, I highly recommend this. However, I memorized a lot of passages from the epistles of Paul. The only problem I had was that I didn't quite understand them very well. So I asked my dad if I could pick out the next passage. He agreed to that, and I picked 1 Samuel 17, the story of David and Goliath. It's an amazing story. If you can read it as the original readers would have read it. First of all, it's vitally important to understand the geography of the passage. As a matter of fact, 1 Samuel 17 starts off with that. The Israelites lived on a mountain range that went from north to south. On the east side of this mountain range was the Judean wilderness and the Jordan River. And on the very west side of Israel was the coastal plain. Between the mountains and the coastal plain is a narrow strip of low hills about 10 miles wide and about 27 miles long called the Shephelah. This is where every major battle takes place, and the battle of David and Goliath is no exception. The one who controls the Shephelah controls it all. I made a whole video about the Shephelah. I'll put the link at the end. It's short, but you will understand so much more about the Bible. So watch this video, especially to understand this story. The story takes place in the Elah Valley, within the Shephelah. The Elah Valley is about seven miles east of Gath, where Goliath is from, and about 14 miles east of Bethlehem, where David was from. This is also where Jesus was born. As you can see, the Elah Valley crosses the Shephelah from east to west. If you can enter the high hill country through the Elah Valley, you would go to Bethlehem, and from there you could just go right north to Gibeah. Now, Gibeah was the city where King Saul lived. He was the king at the time. It was the capital city at that time. This was a very strategic battle. How, now, I read this book about warfare in the Old Testament. It was very interesting, and I wanted to recommend the book. I'll leave the link in the description below. It's a good read. Of course, with any books outside of the Bible that I recommend, do realize that the Bible is the Word of God and that it always has the last word. You'd want to take that attitude with this channel also. But the book describes how one of their major tactics in war during that time was to have one man from each side fight the other. The one who wins conquers for the entire army. You can even see this in a movie I reviewed about 15 years ago called Troy with Brad Pitt. The purpose for this tactic is that there would be only one casualty. You can say what you think, but it beats a nuclear holocaust. As you can see in 1 Samuel 17 verse 9, this is the exact thinking here. So this isn't just a fight between a big and a small guy. No, this determines the future of two whole nations. And Saul entrusted David with the entire country of Israel. David was just a boy. We would have put him in junior high school. So Goliath mocks Israelites for 40 days and all of the Israelites are scared of him, especially Saul. 40 is the number for testing. You can see that all over the Bible. Now, in the history of the Israelites, they were always very scared of the tall giants. Remember at Canaan's Barnea, they were afraid of the folks in Canaan, especially the sons of Anakim. By the way, those are not Star Wars characters. They were giants. Moses told them not to be afraid of them. You can read that in Deuteronomy 1, verse 28 through 29. So David approaches Saul. Saul, of course, is a bit skeptical of this boy. But David tells Saul exactly how he's going to deal with Goliath. See, David is a shepherd boy. Now, they are very good with a sling and a rod. That's what David used with a bear and a lion and he won. Now, when I memorized 1 Samuel 17 as a boy, I thought that David had a small pedal stone. But the stones that shepherds used were about the size of an orange. And uh, when they were thrown at the target, they would travel about 100 miles an hour or about 165 kilometers an hour. Sorry, I support the metric system every inch of the way. 
Now, these folks that were trained by this had an immense precision. In Judges 20, verse 16, it tells us that there were 700 Benjamites, by the way, the tribe that Saul was from, who could throw a stone at a hair's breadth. So Goliath was not the brightest of the bunch. He should have known that you don't fight with a shepherd boy with a sling like that. I know he was a lot bigger, but size is not everything. If you see a rattlesnake, he's very short. But I wouldn't suggest you to mess with him. By the way, I have a friend named Wes who grew up and was a missionary kid in Africa. He said that the boys there who managed the slingshot could also shoot a bird out of the air with that. Maybe Goliath had vision problems. He described David as a boy that came to him with sticks, plural. David only had a rod, singular. So, going back to the story, David convinces Saul that he is the one to attack Goliath. David finds five stones. There might be several meanings there. Goliath had four other brothers, so maybe he wanted to kill the entire family. And there were five cities that made up the Philistine territory. But the one that I like the most is that five is the number of graves. And we need that for every day of our lives. So when Goliath comes out, David is ready and runs to him. And with his sling, shoots one of those big stones at Goliath, and it sank into his forehead, and Goliath was there. Smashing now, aren't we? So David used a skill that he had learned as a young boy with his sheep. What skills do you have that you can use for God? Now, to get a better handle on the geography there, do watch this short video. May God bless you. Bye-bye.